Now, hidden body, the name itself really refers to something that contains multiple layers. So first of all, just the whole idea of something being hidden sparks people's curiosity. But then underneath the surface, it actually refers to all the potentials which are present inside of the body, uh, but not perceived as such. People that we attract to hidden body are also people that are in the first place curious about learning more about their bodies, but also about the relationship between their bodies and their minds. I've really found that the community here is really magical. You're being embraced by the community because we have so many different people in the group, different ages, different uh, walks of life. You can start wherever you want to start, but if you just come to a, a, a place, a practice that really inspires you to learn, you can get to, to, to infinite places. I'm Tim. Hey, I'm Rich. I'm Yori, and we are the three teachers of Hidden Body. So Marcello Palazzo is, you could say, the innovator within the field of movement. He's been researching and developing materials for many years. Uh, every time we invite him to Amsterdam, it's a huge privilege for us to, uh, to learn from him once again, because he always keeps sharing new materials and he keeps deepening our understanding of what it means to, uh, to live inside of a body and to have this human experience. Okay, so this event is going to be about problem solving. So the theme of the weekend was problem solving, which is one of the many things that we're trying to develop within this practice, of course. And what makes this idea of problem solving very powerful is that we're trying to connect raw physical attributes to the ingenuity of the mind, right? So on one hand, you have the strength, you have the flexibility, you have the skills. And then on the other hand, you have this capacity to create solutions to problems and we're trying to bring those two together by for example exposing ourselves to physical riddles so this is something you see a lot in in bouldering or in parkour where people are looking at the environment and then asking themselves can i solve this can i go from a to b and this feeling of problem solving is something we're looking for because it stimulates the body and the brain in different ways. So rather than saying, okay, now I'm in an academic setting and I'm going to work on my cognition, or now I'm in a physical education setting and I'm just going to work on my body, we're saying, okay, we're going to bring these two worlds together, we're going to bridge the gap, and you're going to get physical education where you're also working on all these different cognitive operations and where you're also really developing your brain. If you want to solve problems quickly, now as you will go into the fields you'll notice, you, don't, you will not have the time to think your way through. Think of the best solution. Just you have to act. Diego, catch. Yeah, just. If you don't have to try, okay, should I catch it with my right hand, with my left hand? Should I, should I go to the bottom? Should I? If we want to solve a problem which is related to for example, catching a tennis ball or tapping a number somewhere on a, on a wall. We want to also make sure that the senses are able to process all the information that is coming in. So for example, let's say I need my eyes to catch a tennis ball, but my eyes don't have the speed or the fine motor control to see what the, where the tennis ball is in space. I will be limited in my ability to solve the problem of catching the tennis ball. So for example, by working on the eyes specifically, and then dragging and dropping it into a different scenario with more complexity and more different uh, or more complex uh, questions, we can then see if we actually improved and if we can solve that problem. So for example, having the ability to be very sharp in your reflexes, for me personally, is something I use in traffic. So let's say you're riding your bike through the city of Amsterdam and all of a sudden from your right you see someone almost bumping into you or there's almost a collision. In that moment you need to very quickly be able to respond, right? So you're using your eyes, you're using your balance, you're using all these different sources of information to then very quickly fabricate a key that you then use to unlock that door of that problem. Or on another practical level, for example, let's say something drops from your top shelf and you're catching it. So we're constantly using all these different reflexes, but they're in the background. So oftentimes we don't consider them important, but actually they're extremely important in our day-to-day -day activities.
when we were like doing movement inside this place, it was more about what is the capacity of and the possibility of your body. With Marcello, we discovered not only that, but even what you can do with your body in the nature, outside every place, in any kind of condition that where you are, basically. It's not limited anymore in a space, on a workspace, where you can be called a gym or dojo or whatever else, but it's what you can do with your body everywhere, in any times, any situation, any corner of city, uh, tree, uh, bars, everything has become like accessible. We're going to go into a lot of running and jumping and, uh, and then applying these concepts to create some problems in space and it's really going to activate vision in order to use the environment in a different way. Something like this, it's a gold mine. He breaks out of the box of just developing your body in a facility into developing your body with the entire city as your playground or the entire city as your platform. So it really changes the lens through which you are seeing your experience and it turns on this switch of curiosity because every day you wake up and you ask yourself what am I going to discover today? What happens of course if you're practicing and, and moving outside in the environment is you get exposed to different circumstances. Well one of them was on a beautiful Sunday uh, where it was pouring rain all over the place but we still moved on. This process of working by yourself, but also within a group, especially in different surroundings and environments, is immensely powerful. Actually, the more we go into the more the application realm for real, but having all We were talking about the fact that it's not about becoming a specialist, but more being a generalist and being good at uh, many different things. So instead of becoming the, the tennis player or the fighter or the climber and being very professional in that and very specific, we actually teach people um, yeah, to be a generalist and to have actually all these bits and pieces of different disciplines and then bring it together uh, into one getting rid of these labels yeah. to put them back but renewed so it's like first stripe them all away and then we're going to replace them but with a good order it really needs time to build also the confidence between uh, this body that maybe you feel like ah, it can't do this it can't do this i'm limited here you have to see and experience, oh, I can do this, ah, I can, can do this. And then with each step, you can take it a little bit further. And then all of a sudden, I would say everything can expand and open up and, and the possibilities can become endless. An important thing, I call it this, the lightness skills. You're really feeling your whole spirit is down there versus the spirit is now, it's light. It's, flying high, the more you cultivate this, it almost becomes this esoteric skill where you are now here and then you're there. At some point we just decide about an okay threshold. So we reach the threshold that we're there. We stop learning because we, we have a feeling that everybody, and that we reach the level of everybody around us or that we're just becoming functional and that's it. But actually, if you take that okay threshold and you push it a little bit higher, which is also one thing that we're trying to do with movement, then at some point you realize of your deficiencies, right? So, for example, if it was the okay threshold for humans to walk on the hands, everybody would walk on the hands. But it's not an okay threshold, so it feels something that is very far. But if everybody would do it, I tell you, everybody would do it. So now, 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 it's time to put everything together. The belly is telling me dangerous, very dangerous, very dangerous. And, and also my heart is telling me maybe you should let it go. If two centers will tell me probably you can go for it, I would do it. Nice Claudio. The main intention behind this weekend was to expose people to the materials of, uh, of Marcello, but to also spend time together as a, as a school. He really brought everything together, I would say, as in you're practicing, it's very physical, 
Um, he's talking about all these different concepts, and then sometimes you might even lose a little bit track, right? There's so much information, and then actually bringing everything together, that the meaning behind it, learning, growing, studying together, yeah, finding out about all the hidden potential, which I think is also a very nice reference to, to hidden body and what we do here. So I think we feel that bond is getting stronger and stronger. After a workshop of 16 hours, you're charged, you have had a lot of information, but what's next? And I think that is the question that we're trying to answer within Hidden Body. So 16 hours of pure physical activity with a group of people is very intense. And what we then try to do is we're trying to see, okay, what are the elements that were addressed in the workshop? And let's break those down so that we basically can create an outline for our students as well. So that instead of 16 hours, we're gonna spend it over a couple of months so that everybody can really digest all of the materials, but also integrate it in their, uh, in their body nervous system we really try to integrate it for a consistent uh, period so that everybody really has a different body after a couple of months